There's a few of my teacup poodles on their couch. In the background there outside you can see the lower kids. They're making a bit of a racket this morning. That's where their feeder is. A couple of paintings on the wall in the dog room here. Uh, the one on the right is a nine cup ring paw that I did last year. And the one on the left is a pretty old painting when I was just starting, but I love the colours so I popped it up in here. And there's some of my little doggies. Hey pups! <laughs> Hello! <laughs> they have their own room, the dogs. And they have access to outside, there's a doggy door. Quite noisy Laura kids today, aren't they? Yeah. Lots of them out there today. Oh, there you go. Just a little look at the dogs <laughs> and the dog room. See you later. G'day guys, welcome back. I'm gonna do some browns and reds today. And I have got my same pouring medium as I've been using, 60-40. Um, I was going to use the 70-30 and thicken it up a little bit, but the brown is notorious for being thick. So I thought I'll just keep to my 60-40 for this pour. So I have got 60 grams. I started with 60 grams of pouring medium in each of the cups. The black and the white, I added 50 grams of paint. This one, I only added 40 grams of paint to the dark brown because the browns are so thick. Um, the others, the peachy color and the cream and the red oxide, they were just the same, 60 grams pouring medium and 60 grams of paint. So they were fine. It didn't need to be thinned down. And now uh, we'll see how we go. So I'm using the stop treadmill silicone spot on four cells and I'm going to put a bit more in than I usually go for I'm going to do five drops in each one two three four five I tend to do one drop per 30 grams or one drop per ounce these cups are 120 grams which is four ounces but I'm just going to go with an extra drop one two three four five I'm not going to do the black or the white one two three four Five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I think recently I've just been adding three, but uh, let's go a little bit more, hey? One, two, three, four, five, wipe the sides, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, wipe the sides, one, two, three, four, five. Same thing, it's usually what I do, and that's, that's it. Mixed. Right, uh, let's get to layering. Uh, so I have got 800 grams of mixed paint today. I know I've been doing 700 recently, but I thought I'm just going to go with the 800 this time. And this is our lovely dark brown. This one is burnt umber. And then I've got, this one here is shrimp. It's kind of a light terracotta, sort of apricotish sort of a colour. That one's going in next. And again, I do light, dark, light, dark. Just to get the contrast for the cells, because you want nice rings around your cells. So if you just have light, light, you're not going to see the ring around the cell. That's why you need to go light, dark, in my opinion. That matters <laughs> that's what I've found anyway I just find if you put two colors that are too similar next to each other you just don't get those pretty rings around your cells okay that's the dark and then the light again this is the cream this cup always has less in it at this end start at that end hey make up for it So I know I've done a couple of brown paintings, but I haven't really done one with the red oxide, which is this one here, and the pink.
peachy colour together. So just seeing how that goes. I like to just change up my colours a little bit. Experiment. Okay, so that's it for the first layer. Let's go again. Hopefully I've left enough paint for my second layer. Oh, only just. It's tricky, isn't it? Trying to work out how much paint you're going to need for your second layer. And I'm going to do flip and drags today because I want to go for the lines. I like this react my little stripes. I think they're pretty. They add some contrast, some interest to the pore. Sometimes when I just do the, the three big flip cups, I don't really get the lines. I just get a, a background. And it's a lovely blended background. I do like it. But today, these are quite vibrant colours, so I'd really like the stripes today. So you can sort of determine what outcome you want by whether you do a flip and drag or whether you just do a flip and just flip the cup straight over. So that's a good thing, isn't it? A bit more of the peachy colour. So I'm just getting a, a little mound on a little mound with these paints, not too thick, not too thin. The paint just sits on top. If it was too thin, the paint would just uh, go straight down through the layers. It wouldn't sit on top. So if your paint is falling through and not sitting on top, then it's most likely too thin. And people say to me, well, how do you thicken your paint up? You can just add more paint and that works well or if you know that you're going to have problems with thin paints just don't add so much water to begin with if you're using water or if you're just using paint and flow troll just use less flow troll when i started pouring i just used flow troll and i used three parts flow troll to one part paint and that worked for me for a while until I realised that I wanted better cell shapes because the flow troll was just not giving me the lovely round cell shapes that I wanted. What was that in there? Was that something? I mm, don't know. I guess I'll find out later. Yeah, the flow troll just wasn't giving me those lovely round, well defined cells that I wanted. That's why I started changing to glue. And I did have a mix which was 60% glue, 30% water and 10% flow troll. Just to sort of help it flow, dry a little bit slower and not crack. But I still found that the cells weren't as good as what I wanted. And I took the flow troll out and I haven't looked back. My cells are much better. I've never had a cracked painting, touch wood. <laughs> so, yeah. I just prefer the glue and water. But you guys experiment with what you've got and what you can afford, what's available in your country. Floetrol in Australia is awfully expensive. It's like $54 for four litres or a gallon. $54 for a gallon, it's a lot. And when you go through pouring medium as much as I do, uh, the glue is only mm, about $25, so half the amount, about $25 a gallon or four litres, so it's much more affordable and I get a better result, so why not use it, eh? Right, now let's flip these over. One, two, where's my bar in the middle? There it is there, so that's where I want the centre one to go. Done, like a dinner. Righto, colours. Black, and these are all the global um, impasto paints. Um, white, dirty, can, <laughs> dirty lid there, or dirty label I should say. Uh, burnt umber, everyone knows burnt umber, don't they? It's a standard sort of a colour. That one's called shrimp. 
So the consistency of these paints is that. So it will just sit on top like that. It's pretty thick. So obviously some paints, different brands are going to be different consistency. So if you've got a really thin paint, um, obviously you might need two parts paint to one part pouring medium. And if you've got a really thick paint like Liquitex Basics, you might need two parts pouring medium to one part paint. So it just depends on your paint. You can't just say 50-50 like I do. Red oxide, so it depends on the paint that you're using. And this one, this is just a cream that I made. That's it there. Right, got my little tool ready if I need it. Let's flip and drag. Don't all run away. Trying not to drag too fast because I wanted all the paint to come out. You now, if you drag really fast, you end up with half a cup left. But then, if you drag too slow, you end up with a big puddle here and then nothing down here. So, it's a bit of a practice. I'll just do that to make sure that I get it all out. Loving my strappies. One was a bit slow. See, I've got a lot up here and not much down there. But my cup's very empty. I sprayed my cups with silicone oil as I always do. Now this one I'm going to have to go faster here and slow down here so that the paint sort of spreads here. Try is the optimal word. All right, let's just move this over a little bit. Oh, don't you run off. all over my hands. Such a messy business, isn't it? All right, let's do this last one. Okay. Now, have I got any paint left for my corners? Let's just pop a little bit on the corners. So we know they are done. This cup's got a tiny bit left in it. Mm, no, that corner's oh, all right. You can have just a tiny bit. Let a bit run off first and then pour a bit on. That way, at least your corner's done if you're struggling to get to the end there. But I have got the extra 100 grams of paint on this pour today. Now, I was trying to decide whether to tilt halfway, as I have been doing recently, and then torch or whether to just torch straight away. But seeing these, this big gap here, I'm going to have to try and cover some of that before I torch, otherwise my cells are gonna to get too overstretched. So, I might need my corner catcher because I don't wanna lose the paint off the side there. while I'm tilting the canvas back and forward to get this. So I don't really want the paint to go off the long edge yet. Not really. If it does, it does, but I just needed to cover up that little section there that was bare. Okay, so now I will torch. Love those stripes, aren't they gorgeous? Beautiful colours. Okay, let's turn the torch off and wait a minute, see what we've got. Happening. A little bit here, a little bit there. All right, I'll go again. You guys know I'd rather go slow than torch too much and get too much up at once. I'd rather go twice or three times if I have to than have 
too many cells. Okay, so it takes a little while for the oil to come up to the surface when you've got thick paint and you've got a lot of paint. So don't rush your torching. Now you can see where you've got cells. You can avoid those areas and go around them and get more cells. close there, got a caterpillar, so it went like that. Don't do that, make sure you keep going around in circles. Alright, another bit of torching. I think this one's got plenty. Like a little bit more just in the middle there. This one's got plenty, a little bit more in the middle there. Yep, that'll do. We don't need to overkill, do we? We're going to stretch these out so they're going to grow, which means they're going to take up more surface area and you're going to lose your background. So don't over torch at this stage. Right, now I'm just going to help this paint over here, wet the canvas so that that slides over easily. And then that side's pretty much done. And we can concentrate on the other side. So plenty of paint, got that 800 grams to play with. So I can lose a little bit over the bottom here. I'm still trying to go zigzag to get these covered. Don't want to go just straight down until the last second like so, and then straight back so that you don't lose too much. I'm going to leave that corner, although I can see a bit of canvas there. I'm going to have to put some paint up there. I'm going to have to try and make it look as if it kind of belongs, so make it a bit stripy like that so it kind of looks as if it belongs there on the corner. And then I'll torch it just to get some cells up in there. Just like so, we don't need a lot. So it kind of looks, if you drag your spatula that way and continue your lines that way, you don't want to put a blob on and like make circles because that's not going to be that attractive. That corner's okay. I don't really like this whole area here. I wonder if I can get some more of that off. Maybe I can actually take it to that corner and get that corner off and get that off at the same time. So let's try for that. That one's gone. Corner's gone. Okay, that's better. Straight back. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That was a bit blobby there for me. I think that was one of these triangles that I sort of put my fingers into it. It wasn't that attractive. But how gorgeous are those colours, you guys? Wow! But yeah, I can't just leave it like that now, hey? So this area here, I've got about two inches there that I have to cover. And I would like it to be, I like where that point is to be equal all the way along. I don't like one to be lower than the other, otherwise that one needs more stretching than the others do. So I'm just going to pop, if I can, I've hardly got any paint left. There's a little bit of cream there on the canvas, a little bit of paint there. So I'm going to just see if I can match it with some cream here. like that. Just help that along. Just in case I can't get to the very, very edge, then at least there's a bit of paint in there. And the same with this one. I'm going to match up some of this red oxide. Just in there. I've only got tiny little drops left in this cup. Scrape it out. Scrape out what I can. So I'd like it to be sort of in line with 
the other one. I prefer not to have that deep triangle there, that's all. That's what I'm trying to avoid. So that's going to be difficult to actually cover that last little section. It's just an inch, a couple of centimetres. But it makes all the difference when you're struggling to cover your canvas. So try and fill in those little triangles if you can. Just sort of put a corresponding colour in there. You never know, it might just it might go over the edge anyway and you've done it for nothing. It just helps. Okay, that'll do. Now let's get to tilting and hopefully we won't overstretch these gorgeous cells. See, this is the weight of the paint it's sitting here at the moment, so it needs to go all the way down there, which means all these cells are going to stretch. But let's not stretch them straight down because then they'll get elongated. Let's go side to side and down at the same time and hopefully keep them round. That's why I'm doing this. Because I don't want to just go straight down because that will just elongate all my cells and that's not what I want. I want round cells and I don't want the paint to go off the side, that long edge just yet. I want all the canvas to be covered, hopefully all of it to be covered before I go straight down. So just help that along. And now I can just go straight over, it's over, yay, and back. Wow, gorgeousness. Look at that red oxide next to the white and the cream. It's really popping, isn't it? Now I'm just gonna bring the weight of it back. Turn it around so you can see what I'm doing. Wow, love this one. So you can see that the cells up here are starting to stretch and elongate and these ones here are quite small. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stretch these ones here to kind of match down there. So I'm just moving the weight of the paint into the middle. And just do that until you think, yep, that's about right. Cells are kind of even. These ones are a little bit bigger now. The weight of the paint's more centered. Righto. Love, love, love it. Love, love, love it. Oh, I don't think I've ever done a double love, love, love it, have I? Let me check my corners. Oh, there's a fly. There's always a fly in here, you guys. All right. A little bit there. Run underneath with your tool, catch your drips. That bit there needs a bit of the brown, so I need to find some brown to match. There's a bit of brown. Pop it there. And I need a little bit of the red oxide for here. Very tiny little areas that I've missed. I think I might go back to my 800 grams of mixed paint for this size. I mean, I struggled a little bit getting coverage. But that was my fault I didn't drag those cups down properly. I had that big gap down one end that I had to, to cover. And, you know, just because I've been doing this for a couple of years doesn't mean that I can flip and drag perfectly. No, by all means. I still have bad days, as you see, where... You know, the flips just don't go as you planned. That's okay, you just have to make the best of it. Make sure that you've got enough paint that you can tilt your canvas and 
cover everything, but you don't want too much because if you've got too much paint, you can't move the centre because the outside paint pushes in towards it and you end up with a little, little tiny section like that in the middle. And because there's paint pushing in on it, you can't stretch that middle out and you can't stretch the cells out. So it's a fine line. You can't have too much paint because you can't stretch your cells and um, not enough paint, you can't cover the surface. So there you go. I love, love, love it. Love, love, love it. I'll take you in for a close up. Let me get these grubby gloves off. Really like that red oxide with the cream. Why haven't I done this before, these colours? I'll take you down off the tripod. They're so pretty, aren't they? Got multicoloured cells. That one on the left there, it's got peach and it's got red and it's got cream in the middle. There's lots that are multicoloured. I can't point to them. <laughs> oh, and those ones have got white rings around them. The stripes are really pretty, aren't they? We've got brown stripes and black stripes and red stripes and then we've got some creamy coloured stripes up here again. And then some more brown stripes. It's just so pretty. So happy with this one. I'm going to start doing more pours on my card so that I can sell them for you guys, post them easily overseas. I'm going to go to the post office tomorrow actually, Monday, today's Sunday, so I'm going to go to the post office tomorrow and uh, take a few with me and get some prices and I'll let you know how much it'll cost to send overseas to States, to the UK, to Canada because sending these big canvases, they cost $50 just to ship and then you've got the, the problem of, if, you know, do they make it there in one piece or not? Okay, so I'll leave it there. Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this. Have a go at these colours. Pop them up on the Australian Acrylic Pouring Group. I'd love to see them. And um, I'll catch you for the next one. Bye for now.